protecting me. What do you get if you mix zombies with aliens, pirates with wizards, robots with dinosaurs? Well, you're going to get a game called Smash Up. Smash Up is a game that lets you do just that. You're going to be taking monsters, aliens, creatures, factions, and smashing them together to create your own unique team that's out to take over the world through global domination. Smash Up is a shuffle building card game. To borrow from the box itself, it says the shuffle building game of total awesomeness. And I would have to agree with that. This is a game that lets you, as the player, decide on two different types of factions, smash them together to create your own unique team up that you're going to be using to attack bases and collecting victory points. I'm going to take you through the components and overview of the game and then show you how the game quickly sets up. So let's get started. Smash Up is a two to four player game and it plays in about 45 minutes. Um, it's published by AEG Games and today set it up, we're just gonna be going through the base Smash Up game. Um, this is the original base game. There are expansions out currently during this recording, um, but those just add the playability and expandability of the game. But for today, we're gonna be going through the base game and the base game comes with eight different factions and one set of base cards. Um, I'm going to take you through the components of the game first before we go to the setup because the setup for this game is actually really fast. I mean, it sets up probably one of the fastest games to set up um, for having this, this many cards at the table. Um, each player is going to be able to select two of these decks to create their unique team up um, of characters. So for the base game, you get pirates, aliens, tricksters, wizards, dinosaurs, robots, ninjas, and zombies. So those are the eight factions that come with the base game. And then like I said, you have a stack of base cards as well. Each faction deck has a total of 20 cards. And each one of those decks has 10 minion cards and 10 action cards. And you're gonna be using minion cards to actually attack the bases. And you're gonna be using action cards to do just that, play actions. And some of those actions are gonna be um, affecting your own play and then also creating a negative effect for other players at the table because all players are going to be using that unique team up of characters and creatures um, to attack bases just the same as you are. Um, I think we'll go through the uh, faction deck first and just show you um, how those kind of break down and then we'll jump over to the base deck and show you how those break down um, and then we'll go through the setup of the game and kind of go through how a, the game would start up. So let's just take a look at the zombie deck here. We have a minion card. Um, and the top left corner of the card is the power rating for this minion. This Grave Digger has a power of four. And that's the number that you're gonna be using to determine um, the power versus the strength of the base that you're attacking. Um, and we'll get into that here in a minute. The next set of text here at the top is the name of the minion, the Grave Digger. Uh, in the middle, it obviously shows you this is a minion card. And like I said, there's only two types. You have minions and actions. And then down here in the middle, bottom middle, you have the action or ability text for this particular minion. So this minion says, you may place a minion from your discard pile into your hand. So this minion actually gives you the ability to pick cards up from your discard pile. Um, down here in the bottom right is the symbol of the faction. This is just so that you can easily recognize whose cards they are. So the zombie has this little uh, zombie hand. And that's the minion card. These are the cards that you're going to be using to actually attack bases. Uh, the next card uh, that you have within your faction decks are the action cards. Um, and the action card um, is a little bit simpler than a minion because all it does really is just plays an action. Uh, this action card is called Lend a Hand. Um, at, that's the title, top, title text at the top of the card. Then in the middle again we have the flavor of what kind of card this is, whether it's an action or a minion. And then here in bottom middle we have the ability text. So for Linda Hand, shuffle any number of cards from your discard pile into your deck. So that's an action that you could possibly play on your turn. Again, same bottom right hand symbol here, the zombie symbol. That's just to show you which cards you have. Uh, so you're picking those up and you know which cards you own. Those are the two types of cards that you get in the game. Um, each deck is the same thing. 10 actions, 10 minions. And they all have very different effects that kind of play to the type of faction that you're playing. So zombies have a very necro-like 
um, abilities where they're kind of resurrecting themselves from the dead and always coming back into your hand. Uh, you have robots that do very robot type activities. They can like spawn more minions. Um, pirates, very pirate like. So each deck is kind of built to the flavor of that faction. So if you like the idea of pirates and pirate like actions, we'll pick that card up and mix it around, mix it in with another deck that you might think um, you might like magic users. So you want to pick up the wizards and put those two things together. Um, it gives you a lot of possibilities to play different types um, of factions together. It makes the game have a lot, a lot of playability because there's a lot of different combinations that you can be doing with just mixing the factions together. You can even have a second base game and and have those players play one another. So if you if two players at the table want to play wizards versus wizards, you could do that if you had a second base game. A player could play wizards and pirates versus wizards and pirates because those two cards are coming from separate base games. Um, the one thing you can't do is have wizards and wizards. You can't have two of the same factions together. But that gives the game a lot more expandability, being able to bridge base systems together and actually play factions of the same faction against one another to see how pirates uh, versus pirates actually would you know play out. Um, but that's the faction cards. That kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to get with the base set. Um, let's move over to the base cards. And the base cards are exactly that. You're going to be attacking these bases with your minions. And you're going to be using your actions to help boost your minions or help or help stop other players from attacking. And the base cards, we'll just start with this top one here, um, is the Great Library. The top left number, that's the break point of the base. That's What that means is the total number of minions that are attacking this base. You're going to look at, you're going to sum up the total power numbers of all the minions from all players and see if that number reaches 22. Once it hits 22 plus, that means the base has been destroyed and players then get to collect their victory points. So for the Great Library, we have three large numbers in the center of the, the, the base card. And these are the victory point numbers. So first place is going to get four um, victory points. Second place is going to get two victory points. And third place is going to get one victory point. Four player games, there is no fourth place, so you get no points. So it's a good idea to get your minions on board bases, even if you don't think you're going to be able to have the, power, the minions with the most power on the base, you still want to get on there because you can still pick up that number two or one spot. And the way those points are scored, I should go through that real quick. If you have three player game and you have a player that has minions that total a power of eight and then another player that has a total power of four and then another power or player has a power of two. Well, the total number of minions that equal to eight, even if that's like four or five minions deep and you have eight power total, you have the most the most strength, I guess, for that base. And you're gonna use that number to determine that you're the first place player on that base. And then you're gonna go down from there. So the player that has the second most power is gonna get runner up, the third most power, third place. Um, so you're gonna be using those minions to attack those bases. At the bottom of the base, um, we have a little bit of text here, and that's an ability text for the base. So for the great library, it says, after this base scores, all players with minions here may draw one card. So each base has a little bit different effect um, as you score it. Some uh, allow you to move minions, some are gonna do various things. I don't wanna give too much away because I don't wanna give the game away, but there's even actions that happen within the base. So that might decide, do I even wanna mess with that base? Maybe you do, maybe you really wanna mess with it and you wanna be the player that wins because sometimes if you're the highest scorer on here, you might get a bonus, you may not. But that kind of sums up the base cards. Um, again, the components, pretty simple. But there's a lot of playability in the fact that you do get to mix everything up. And, and just like the title of the game says, you get to smash it up. You get to change it up. So today I'm playing Wizards and Tricksters. Tomorrow I'm going to play Zombies and Ninjas. So there is a lot of playability in the game, um, even though the components are pretty simple. Um, let's get into the setup of the game because I think that pretty much wraps up the components without showing too much. Like I said, I don't want to spoil the game because there's a really a lot here and I just really want to kind of go through the components quickly, what you're going to get, and then we're going to buzz through the setup and kind of explain how turn begins. Uh, so for this game, let's say I want to play Ninja Zombies. So I'll pick up Ninja Zombies and that will be the two factions that I'm going to mash together. 
Um, players are going to go around, and you probably would, would do it where each player gets to pick one faction, and then you get to do it again. You pick a second faction. I would probably wouldn't want to let somebody just pick two right away. Let person pick one, and then you go to the next player, and they can pick. But you probably can change those rules however you want. You could come to the game saying, I'm going to play these two. Well, just depends on the players you're with. They might allow that. For this, I'll pick these two, and you're going to shuffle these together. You're going to put these two factions together and you're going to sh you're going to shuffle them up. Then you're going to take whatever factions weren't used, set those to the side cuz you won't be using those the rest of the game. You're only going to use the factions that the players have chosen and then you're going to place out the base cards. And the base cards you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have those all shuffled up and then you're we'll pretend that this is a three player game. So for a three player game, you're going to put out four bases. And the bases are always put out one more than the number of players. So for this three player game, we'll put out four bases. And then you're gonna put the base pile, cause that's gonna be a draw pile, just somewhere near the bases because as bases are scored, you're gonna be removing those bases and placing them into the base discard pile. Um, and then you're gonna draw out a new base to replace. Each player, once they have their faction deck shuffled and ready. They'll just put that out in front of them because that's going to be a draw pile for them because at the start of the game you're going to pick up five cards. And that's going to be your starting hand. And within each turn players are allowed to play one minion and one action. They don't have to play either. They can play one or they can play both. But you're allowed to play one minion, one action. That doesn't sound like a lot but some of these factions will actually allow you to play more actions as you play actions or if you're playing minions some minions will allow you to play more actions or maybe possibly even play more minions so there may seem like limited amount of actions and minions but the cards actually dictate what's going to be happening in the game on your turn um, one thing to note as you're playing cards you play one minion one action so I didn't pick up a minion here so let's just pick up a minion so we have one So as you play, you play one minion on any base of your choice. You choose which base you think you might want to try to attack first. You're going to play that minion on, play the zombie lord on the jungle oasis where that is a base that's going to break easy with 12 points. Second and third place are going to get nothing, but if you can be the player who has the most power, that's the number in the top left corner of your uh, minion card. If you can destroy that base, and have the most minions with the highest number of power, you're gonna pick up an easy two points. And then you'll play an action card if you choose. And then when your turn is over, you'll discard the action if that's what you're supposed to do. Some cards, I think, have some lingering effects. I cannot remember completely, um, so I apologize. But then when your turn is over, you're gonna draw two cards. And you can have a total number of 10 cards in your hand. So you can actually pick up a lot more cards um, throughout the game than you normally hand and anything over 10 you're going to be discarding down and it's not uncommon to always have a, a jam-packed hand full of 10 cards and you're constantly trying to get rid of cards that you don't want. But play is going to go around the table just like this. Um, each player is going to be picking a base that they're going to try to destroy. Reaching that break point, scoring points, the player that hits 15 victory points first wins the game. After that Mix it back up again, switch factions, start up a new game, put out brand new bases, and start smashing up all over again. Um, that kind of concludes the setup and overview for Smash Up. It's a quick game. It's a fun game because it pits player versus player as you're trying to destroy bases, collect your victory points. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys later.